Hey, General Mumble made a video game, and uh, today I'm going to be playing through it on the hardest difficulty because it's very, very difficult, and I thought somebody might want to walk through so that they know how to get through the game. Uh, the game came out three weeks ago. The reason I'm making this video now is because today they've rolled out a patch for the game to make this achievement actually work properly. So I'm going to be playing through the game on Raging Difficulty, which by admittance of the game is unfair. And, uh... Hopefully by the end of this, an achievement will pop. Um, you can skip cutscenes by pressing the 7 key. Uh, fittingly enough, grab the key, grab your axe, and leave. This is uh, the easiest level in the game to beat on Raging Difficulty because there are no enemies. Uh, plug in the jackhammer, turn it on, step back. This is the only way you're going to take damage in this level is if you're too close to the jackhammer at any point. So don't do that. Uh, walk up to the door to trigger the explosion behind you. Wait for it to dissipate, top down, grab the green key. The passcode to leave is in the book. Let's get out of here. And that's the first level done. Very easy, very straightforward. You wish the whole game was that easy on Raging Difficulty. This, I don't think counts as a level. This is so short that I'm pretty sure, like, there's not even achie an achievement for it. All you have to do is drive to the store. Don't even bother going into the front door. You can't. Instead, drive around back. You don't even have to drive if you don't want to. But it is a bit faster. And in we go. Okay, now the game actually starts. This is why a tutorial is needed, because this game ramps up in difficulty uh, pretty quick. So, let's begin the level by hopping on top of the vending machine and getting ready to whack some bubbles. Whoops. There's a ton of them, and you take a lot of damage on this difficulty. It's, in, it's obscene how much damage you take. It's one of the only two things that changes between difficulties, is the amount of damage you take is just amplified on higher difficulties. The second thing that changes is that enemies don't drop health anymore. On easier difficulties, they usually leave like a little soul egg behind that you can consume. Um, they don't do that on this difficulty. I've just fallen. Um, it, it's worth noting that you can only store 200 little poos, and you need poo if you want to um, traverse great distances. So there is benefit to not spamming spacebar while you play, conserving your, your, your double jumps, and also making sure that when you do jump, you're on a flat surface, because if you are in the air even just a little bit, you'll poo instead. Um, but also you can pick poo back up and put it inside of you, because of course you can. Uh, would you expect anything less from a game made by uh, General Mumble. Here's your vending machine. You're going to get real familiar with those over the course of your playthrough because they are your best method to heal. Uh, stand back when you pop pus bubbles because they will damage you greatly, especially on this difficulty. Get ready because there's a bubble out there and around the corner there's, yeah, there's two of them. <clears throat> so get them out of here. Jump through the non-mirror and to the mall. I like to grab the bong there, extra little bit of healing doesn't hurt. There are a couple bubbles around the store. I would recommend getting rid of them before you grab the wife here. There we go. I don't recall there being any other weapons right now, um, but if you want early access to the sniper rifle, which I highly recommend, you're going to want to head out the women's washroom here and access this secret area by jumping around the store and rushing out to the parking lot. Doing so is going to spawn a bunch of blood bubbles. D don't even bother. Don't waste your time. Not needed. They can't get you anyways. Careful with this jump and hop back in the mall here. If you die at any point, it's not going to ruin your achievement. You just have to beat the game on Raging Difficulty. If you're, if you're just going for the achievement and you're worried like, oh, what if I die or what if I back out to the main menu or whatever. The only thing that's going to ruin your achievement is if you... Hang on, I gotta focus. There you go. The only thing that's going to ruin the achievement is if you like actually restart the campaign or go to the level select screen and pick a random level. And the game warns you that you're resetting your progress, so it, it, you'll be made aware of the fact that you're ruining the campaign. So this is why I recommend the sniper rifle, because these cameras really pack a punch, and being able to just snipe them out from a distance is a godsend. I 
think that's all of them. Just double checking as I go down the aisles. Also, this is ammo for the sniper rifles, so don't have to worry about running out. There's a whole aisle of the stuff. Um, there's a bunch of ammo for toilet sparkle here. I uh, I found that that's kind of the most useless weapon on the higher difficulty. I don't know why, it just is. I just have a really hard time um, dealing damage. Brown water? Yeah, that'll work. I always forget what heals you and what just <laughs> makes you puke, but I guess brown water's chill. Okay, one more camera around the corner here. There you go. Perfect. Uh, oh yeah, you can collect your tampons back up as well by walking over the cameras that you shot. Uh, there's one right around the corner here, so you're gonna wanna be a quick shot with this one. There you go. I'm not that quick. I'm not experienced with FPS games, and if I can beat this game on Raging Difficulty, then I know you can. Okay, so with our blue key, we can now leave. These cameras should be, whoops, I forgot about them. Blow the pus bubbles. These cameras should be disabled because we popped the security override switch. Um, in here, there's some ammo for the nail gun and a toolbox. I don't actually know what the toolbox does. Despite how many times I've played this game, I've never bothered to check what it's doing. It's probably just giving me ammo for the nail gun if I had to guess, but I don't know. Uh, there's deodorant in here. You don't really need deodorant yet, but you might as well grab it, I guess. Um, in the staff room here, you can look out the window and pop these bubbles preemptively, um, but I walked too soon into the <laughs> room. If you, if you like just carefully inch into the room, they don't trigger, but whatever, there's only two of them anyways. Um, more healing if you need it. Coffee machine, if you're still, if you're wondering how to get the achievement for making 77 cups of coffee, this is how. Lift the mug, place it under the machine. You don't even have to drop the mug. Just press E when you're hovering over the machine. Coffee goes in the mug. And look at that, you got a full cup of coffee. Drink it up, and you can just repeat the process infinitely. And it takes a very long time, but that's how you get 77 mugs of coffee. I haven't done it yet myself. I'm probably at like 40 or 50 mugs, so... Eventually I'll get around to it. <clears throat> Into the vents here. Uh, there's some... what is it? All right, ammo and healing. Good stuff. Okay. Down here we have a red key, and this puts you back out to the warehouse the beginning. So back into the vent we go. Back into the mirror. And whoops, I totally forgot to kill this guy. Okay, if you run into a tank and it hits you, you're going to be on fire. Um, so you need to get your, your P button ready. Uh, forgive me for not wanting to be crass. There it is. Q. There it is. Q is to urinate and put yourself out if you catch on fire at any point. Uh, I don't know where the tank is, I'm just gonna ignore him, pretend he's not here. Tanks are probably one of your biggest threats on this difficulty. It's it's pretty bad, they just deal a ton of damage. Okay, there are some bubbles in here you're gonna want to clear out, uh, as well as there was a, a pus module there. <laughs> module? A pus module. There's some boomer juice up here, you don't need it yet, but it's there. Might as well grab it, it's free. It doesn't hurt ya. Um, I'm playing this game on the lowest graphic settings, um, so there might be some weird like texture warping happening. Okay, here's your first boss battle, and we're literally fighting a boss. So get your pistol out and uh, run in. So you are going to aim at his face. He's going to start vomiting at you, just strafe left and right. It's not too hard to avoid, but use your ears because behind you, bubbles are going to start dropping in. Um, I'm just going to see if I can get one to spawn in so you can see it happen. There they come, see? They just drop out the top there. So while you're doing this, whoops. While you're doing this, keep turning around and getting ready to pop bubbles behind you. Those are your main threat, because as long as you're strafing, he can't really do that much damage. And there actually is some minor healing items sitting around the boss as well. You can see there's a burger there you can quickly eat for a pick-me-up, so. You don't want to attack the bubbles with the pistol. That's why I'm switching weapons, because if you attack the bubbles with the pistol, they actually grow in size. Because you're adding to their volume. Um, which can be beneficial, mind you, because when they pop, eventually they will pop because they'll grow to a size that they can't uh, maintain, and they pop, and then a bunch of ammo comes out, which is really cool. Okay, as soon as this level starts, just run. Okay, I, that guy was blocking my entrance to where I needed to go. Um, there's, there's healing in the shower here. So if you just wait under the shower nozzle, you'll heal. But yeah, this is a very mean start to the level because as soon as you start, you're getting ambushed by enemies. And again, because we're on the raging difficulty, they do an insane amount of damage. 
you could see how fast I dropped from, I think it was like 80 health or 90 health even, all the way to 20 health. Like, it's insane. Um, so yeah, these showers are very, very helpful. So in here, we have our shotgun, uh, quote unquote shotgun. Uh, the ammunition this uses is the poo counter that you can see in the bottom right beside my head. Uh, again, that's what you also use to double jump. So be conservative with the poo gun, but for the record, it's actually very useful. And especially for this encounter coming up, this is one of the harder encounters that you'll have during rage and difficulty. So you hit this button and it triggers a bunch of enemies to fall uh, and you need to clear them all out. So my strategy for this is to let them come to me. The bubbles will come up here. The tanks usually will not because there's a little lip in front of the doorway that the tanks have a really hard time clearing. It's not impossible for them to clear it, but they have a hard time with it. Um, but the bubbles have no, uh, no trouble getting to you. So this is where you're gonna want your, uh, your musky husky here. Just light them on fire. Probably light yourself on fire, but that's okay. Just put yourself out, hop on a shower. And you can see through the wall the 15 damage that's being dealt. Or maybe I'll just step out in case the bitrate's crushing it. But you see the 15's popping out? That's the amount of health that the tanks are passively losing because they're burning. That is some cheese that you're going to find very valuable during this playthrough. <laughs> Instead of having to confront tanks directly, you can just do that. The color of the 15's indicates how close they are to dying as well. You can see they get redder and redder as they pop up and eventually they go full like pinkish red and then they're dead. Hello, hello. Who's that in there? You having a good poo? And there we go. Game saved. Enemies cleared out. We love that. Um, around this corner are some kamikazes, so get uh, maybe the nail gun out. Start shooting. Clear them out. And they blow up into acid, and if you walk into the acid pool, you take damage. Okay, up the lift here, there's acid bubbles. These are uh, horrendous, if I'm being honest. Because, again, they pop into acid, and if you touch the acid, you take damage. So, just peek around the corner, pop one, and then run back. Uh, there should be a second one. I'm pretty sure I remember there being two. There he is, he's right there. We good? Is that it? Oh, right, 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 there's a turret up here. Again, even here, the sniper rifle is always my go-to weapon for the for the camera turrets. Um, healing here, because of course, why would I not want to be 100 health? Okay, let's hop out here, hop over here. Here's your checkpoint. There's no manual saves in this game, so you're going to be relying on uh, auto checkpoints a lot. Um, you have to time the walls. See, I'm trying to get into that doorway. Uh, and once I fill the vat here, I'm going to swim through it, but I don't think I can squeeze through that. It's a pretty tight sp uh, squeeze, so let me just go like that. How about there? Is that good? Nope, I just built a wall for myself. I'm going to actually watch what I'm doing this time. There we go. That looks good. Perfect. Okay, so this encounter I thought was one of the hardest parts in the entire game, but I realized at some point you can cheese it. Um, but I haven't actually tried to do this yet. So you're going to be witnessing me attempting the cheese for the first time here. Um, I grab the gun here. You don't really need it. Um, so as soon as you drop down here, it's going to bring in a, it's going to bring in your first wave of enemies, and you're going to have to clear out wave after wave in order to do this properly. After you clear out all the waves, that door over there underneath the red light will open. But what we're going to do is go in that door up there, and it allows you to bypass this entire sequence. And I swear, the game has placed these cheesy little shortcuts in specifically for raging difficulty because it's absurd. So I think the way to get up there is to climb up this stack of boxes against the wall and then long jump to it. So I'm going to try to execute this right here. World premiere. You ready? So immediately after jumping out and initiated uh, the enemies to start spawning. But I'm going to ignore that. Jump up here. And I'm going to knock this door down. Crouch under here. I don't know why the vent broke itself. It just did. Get my guitar out. And we're good. Kind of. I forgot there's kamikazes that spawn here, but I somehow survived them, so it's all good. Okay, here there is a... secret. And it allows you to get the crossbow early. This will come in handy later. We don't really need the crossbow yet, but it's nice to have it now because we're going to be thanking ourselves later. So grab the blue key. 
Um, it sucks that I've only got 26 health right now because when you come back into the next room, some little bunnies spawn. And I'm thinking actually I changed my mind about the crossbow because they're going to be kind of helpful right now. I'm just going to fire that up there, let it bounce around. And I'm dead somehow. I don't know how I electrocuted myself when I died because I'm underwater. I don't know how the electricity happened. This game is horribly brutal if you don't have full health. So I'm just going to do this the old fashioned way. Nail gun through them. And let's get out of here. Oh, there's another one. Of course there is. And I've got two health. Phenomenal. And he's not even dead. Amazing. Is there anything in any of these lockers I can use to heal myself? No. No, there's not. Okay, well, that's okay. We'll just head forward. And just be good at video games, I suppose. If I must. Okay, I had some corn and it healed exactly one health. That's fantastic. Okay, up here is where we want to go. You can see there's four chutes here, but the one that's broken is the one we're going to head up. Um, wait, wasn't there something back here? Okay, I got some more boomer juice. There you go. So if you if you parkour correctly, you'll be able to come up here and careful of that sewage bubble swimming around. Uh, let me enter Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Turn off the music because nobody needs to hear that. And in the staff only area in the back, there are some cookies and an orange. And you can turn the fan off and you can say hello, hello and pick up the user manual for the security cameras. I've never heard that before. Apparently if you squeeze the... <laughs> apparently if you squeeze the teddy bear, it actually makes the FNAF jump scare sound. Okay, that's fun. Uh, down we go. So this breaks us back into this middle area, but we have the yellow key now, so we can leave the yellow door. Careful of the bunnies. And we are just about at the end. Might as well heal up as much as we can. Finally, we've got triple nail guns. You might have already had triple nail guns at this part because you actually grabbed the nail gun in the apartment, but it doesn't matter because we got them now. So eat the mushroom that initiates the trip sequence. Get your guitar out so you can smack these out of the way a little bit faster than just walking into them. Just watch your jumps. Please leave. And after a very long trippy walk sequence, there it is, there's the sewer. So we wake up after a bender. Uh, we're gonna grab our third can of Boomer Juice. And we're gonna prepare for a boss fight. Isn't that fun? Um, again, there's lots of ammo for this gun, but I found that this gun's just not very useful during the raging playthrough. Uh, there's no quick save, which is really annoying. The quick save was just at the beginning of the level. So if we mess this up, then unfortunately, yeah. So if you hop on this <clears throat> and you press this button, it turns around. It does a 180 degrees and it dumps you into a boss arena. And the game thinks it's really, really funny because there's no like build up before the boss fight. It just immediately begins. Oh, look at that. One of the enemies is already popping through the wall. Get out of here. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to hop off the platform, hit the button. And just like that, we can actually see <laughs> the boss we're going to be fighting. This is the left testicle and this is the right testicle over here. Oh, he's already left. There he is. He's right there. They're patiently waiting for me to come out of this lift so that they can start the, the battle. But we're going to start it preemptively um, by firing like this. Uh, a lot of your nails are going to get stuck in the wall. They're not going to squeeze through this gap properly. Um, but you can just pick them back up if that happens because when nails get stuck in a wall, you can just pick them up. So that's one free testicle. Easy. The second one, you can start shooting, but at a certain point it's going to leave and it's going to start flying around the room erratically. And when that happens, we're going to have no choice but to face it the good old-fashioned way. But we're still going to try to deal as much damage as we can before then. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Nice. Okay, so that initiated the last phase of the boss battle, which is perfect. Uh, I'm going to get your boomer juice ready. I know my head's blocking the screen, but I've got three cans of the stuff. So I'm going to press G to use a can of boomer juice. I'm going to flip this around. And I'm going to rush at him and press C. 
And that pops him, and that ends the battle. Um, there's still these guys floating around, so be careful, but that's the main threats dealt with. The boss battle has ended. Um, if you're unlucky, the testicle might be on the other side of the room, in which case you'll have to chase after him, and it's this whole kit and caboodle, but at the end of the day, all you have to do is get close enough to him, press C, and he pops, and that's it. Boss battle over. Um, and that's why the boomer juice is so important. I mean, that's the most important use for the boomer juice in the entire game. So make sure you have that available. Uh, I'm going to swap to the shotgun because I don't have a whole lot of nails left. Um, around the corner here, a couple of tampons are going to fly at you, and I don't have a lot of health. So i got to play this very carefully because I don't feel like doing that again. I'm pretty sure there was an autosave after the fight, but just in case. There we go. That's one. That's two. And there's some rabbits down here. I actually kind of forgot about them. There's several of them. It's not just those ones. When we come around the corner here and go up here, there's a few more. I think this actually might be a good fit for the crossbow. Have that bounce around. Maybe fire another one just to be safe. Okay, I'm going to say we're good. Nope, we're not. Somehow that still missed two of them. Is that it? Are we done? Are we good? Okay, I got 10 health. I'm trying to be very careful here. What is this? It, that did nothing for me. That did not heal me. That just made me puke. Cool. So, plug in the computer, and let's enter in our password here to drain the lava. Uh, we're going to type in poo, poo, one, two, three. Peak maturity. Um, I totally forgot there is weed up here. Perfect. Weed heals you. It makes everything slow motion. So if you're doing a speed run, maybe not the best method of healing. But uh, for our purposes, you know what? It works. Uh, as far as I know, you can walk out any of these four holes and they all take you to the same place, which is down here and into the sewer. Okay, down here we hit this button and now we have to navigate a minefield, literally. Uh, if you stick to the bottom, you can get through the first part here. And then, I guess around here, hug the wall. And now when you stick to the top, you can get through the second part. Um, careful coming out, though, because we got enemies. And they, they come underwater, apparently. That's a kamikaze walking around, so I'll just blow him up from down here, where it's safe to do so. And that still wasn't all of them. There's a second one right there. Okay, down here, some more tampons are going to spawn, and I've got 79 health, so wish me luck. Perfect. You might struggle with that more than I did. I That's honestly not that easy. I think I made that look easier than it is. Let's check the cameras. And there it is, door code 76293. Okay, keep that crossbow out and get ready to fight because we've got little rabbit dudes again in tight spaces. So we want to get behind this door where somebody is bathing. In order to do so, we're going to kneel down here. We're going to pull out the axe and break this vent grate and turn around the corner here. And shield your eyes, children, because there certainly is somebody bathing, but that's okay, because we're not here for her, we're here for the bath bomb. If you drop that in the bath water, whoops, I just drained the bathtub, why did I do that? Doesn't matter. If you hop in the bathtub while there's a bath bomb on it, it increases your max health to 200. That is a temporary buff, so from now on, healing will do nothing until I drop back down to 100. But for... Until that happens, it is very helpful to have the extra 100 health. And I just lost it all. Isn't that phenomenal how fast you can lose all your health in this game? So I'm going to fill the bathtub back up. Okay, so with 200 health and a nearly full ammo shotgun, we're going to head forward. And the end of the level is just up ahead here. We're just going to clear out some more bubbles in this room. Is that it? I thought there were more than that. Okay. We're going to pee in this little tube here, and it's going to play a very long comedic sequence with this door struggling to open. Wait for this door to open. <laughs> it 
Dude, the animation for the door opening. It's not even on the hinges. Okay, hop on the boat. And there is a very long driving sequence. I don't think I need to show you how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. Just follow the path. If you ever get turned around, which very likely will happen, just pay attention to the flow of the sewage. You want to go with the flow, not against it. So if you get turned around and you look down and you realize, wait a minute, I'm currently swimming upstream. Uh, maybe turn, turn yourself around. And when all said and done, you will go down the drain and into this truck and you'll be delivered to a farm and that is where our next level begins. So immediately turn around, pick up the fertile launcher and we're going to have to act quickly, but we're going to fly in the air and we are going to try our best to land as close to a cage as we can. Here's one here. Okay, and I'm getting assaulted by cows, but it's okay. We made it. And now, inside of this cage, we can safely attack every cow on the barnyard here. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is the only reasonable way to do this, other than um, hopping on top of the hedges and sniping them from up there. Either way, you gotta cheese this part. I truly don't think you can just run around and attack all the cows and somehow maintain the amount of health required to actually clear out the entire field. Um, you can also just run. You don't have to attack the cows, but they're very fast and they will hunt you down through the whole level. So I really don't recommend that. I recommend taking the time and slowly sniping all the bubbles off of all the cow heads. You, wow, I can't believe he hit me from in here. Um, you don't actually have to kill the cows. You just have to pop the bubbles on their heads, which makes this a little bit easier. Okay, they're starting to get really far away. Let me switch to the sniper. I'm sorry, I don't have my hotkeys memorized, so I just scroll through the entire weapon selection. And there we go, game save, we did it. Um, if you see any udders on the ground or attached to cows, that's chill too. Um, you can drink from them to build your health back. Why are you chasing me? What do you want? I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna sippies. I'll give you a little sippies, there you go. Okay, I would recommend getting the shotgun out. Uh, you have to cross this road, which is kind of unfair because there are sometimes race cars that just fly down here abominable speeds okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now I think we're good <laughs> what did I tell you bro what did I just say ammo for the fertile launcher I didn't even use the fertile launcher the fertile launcher does have its uses but the problem is it's just a very reckless weapon because of the recoil if you're anywhere near the blast you're gonna take massive damage which is something you really can't afford on this difficulty so I prefer less explosive weapons, personally, but hey, maybe you maybe you really like the fertile launcher, in which case, who am I to tell you what to use and what not to use? Um, take your time here, try to clear out every enemy as you slowly inch your way across this area. Um, the big thing we're watching out for is a giant ball of sewage that's going to come out of that warehouse in the distance there. That barn. So we're going to just slowly inch our way around, make sure that we take care of all the enemies before that dude spawns, because the last thing we want is to stack enemies on top of that. What was it? Three. Okay, three for the shotgun. Okay, around here is the trigger for him, so make sure not to step too far out. Okay, and now I'm going to run for it. Because if you run for it, you'll pop a checkpoint. Perfect. Hop in the water here, there is a very real chance that you'll just get electrocuted and die. But don't worry about it, because if that happens, we just got a checkpoint. I'm currently getting electrocuted and dying, and there it is. Don't worry about it, watch this. We're gonna spawn back, and guess what? The sewage bubble no longer knows where we are, as long as we're fast about it. Now we can safely swim through the canal all the way to where we need to go. Even though you can hear that the bubble's behind us, he can't get us. Sadly, that is not the last encounter we will have with a biblically accurate... Oh man, what is the name for this thing again? Biblically accurate... <laughs> uh, it's a very creative name, whatever it is. I can't remember it. It's not our last time encountering one. But for now, we're good. Okay, there are some couple. There are a couple bunnies back here, but they shouldn't be able to get you as long as they stay behind the fence. So there's no point in breaking the fence and aggravating them. Instead, we're just going to head up to the warehouse. Now, stepping inside of this treehouse is what's going to trigger the next encounter, um, and also it's going to trigger this bubble to pop. So just pop it on your own before then. Um, let me. What even just hit me? Oh, somehow one of them got out and chased me all the way up here. How about that? <clears throat> hop up, hop on top here. Grab the key. 
Grab some nail ammo, doesn't hurt. I would get the sniper rifle out here. I think that that's probably your most effective weapon, plus there's some ammo right here if you need it. And we're gonna just peek around the corner here and we're gonna let the cultists slowly walk up towards us. And as they do that, we're just gonna try to take them out one by one. If you can land headshots, they should be a one-shot kill. Okay, I don't know how this rabbit made it all the way up here, but let's take him out too. Headshots should be a one-shot, so aim as close to the face as you can. There is um, bullet travel on the tampons. It's not a hit scan weapon, so, you know, take that into consideration. Okay, that is not the weapon to use. Let's switch to the nail gun. I swear there were two. Where'd the other one go? I don't even hear it. Hello? Did he fall in the water? Oh, yeah, he did. Look at him, he's down there. Okay, so we have the green key. We can leave. Good for us. If you are under 100 health right now, there is a picnic table over there. Why did I just hear a cultist? There is a picnic, uh, not a table. There's a picnic setup over there with some food on it you can go and grab. But don't grab all of it. Just grab what you need because we're, we're going to actually have a second use for that picnic later. Okay, all right. I don't know why that just happened, I'll be honest. I've <laughs> It's funny how many times I've played this game and every time I play something something weird will happen that just didn't happen the other five times I played. Okay, we're gonna open this door, we're gonna hop inside. And do not touch that! Do not pick that weapon up, do not break those ammo crates, just safely walk around. Because picking that weapon up is what triggers a wave of enemies to fight you that you simply don't need to fight. Don't do that. Instead, hop on this trampoline, and we're going to try to jump over that fence there. Perfect. Okay. So there are still enemies over here, but not nearly as, ma as many as there would have been if we stayed and fought, you know, hordes of them over there. So here's this guy. He is an absolute pain. He blocks most of your shots, but some of them get through. So just keep pelting him until eventually your nails actually pierce through the helmet. And why on earth are you here? Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. He's not supposed to be here. Um, if we die, whatever, we'll load the checkpoint. For the record, we're just trying to get this key. If we could just grab the, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. I don't know why he was here. Uh, there is a robo cultist out here. I don't know what the proper name is. I don't even know where he is. I don't know when he spawns in. I just know he's here. Do I have to pick up the key first? Oh, there he is. Yeah, this guy's a real pain. You want to watch out for that little glowing orb that he shoots. Um, the purple walls are easy to avoid, but it's the orb that makes the walls, that, like, tracks you. So you really want to be careful of that. Um, and just keep going in circles and pelting him until eventually we can break through. This guy takes a lot of hits. Actually, the fertile launcher might not be a bad choice here. You don't have to hit him directly, you can just hit the ground beneath him and deal massive damage. Not the last time you'll fight one of those things, so you better get familiar with that. Okie dokie. So we made it back here. We grabbed the blue key. We can enter the house now via the back. Um, I was going to say get your nail gun out, but I'm actually out of ammo, so I guess I'll use the shotgun. We've got some more pus bubbles to pop from a safe distance. Um, don't know why you're here, but okay. Goodbye. Uh, in here is the bathroom. Uh, you can heal here. Um, there's no bath bomb, but I'm pretty sure there is a bath bomb in a different room. I can't remember which room. I just remember there is a bath bomb somewhere. I'll get back to you when I find it. I found the bath bomb. I, I, it's just lying on the floor in the bedroom, I guess. I don't know. It's not where I, where I remember it being, but eh, if you have to look around for it, it's worth it. Take a nice cozy bath. Perfect. Okay, in this room, blow up any... Um, pus bubbles is one on the floor, one on the wall. And enter into the mouth, the maw of the beast. Um, we, after dropping down into the throat, we walk up this giant metal, um, what was it? A, like a bone saw or something? Um, pop the bubbles there. Uh, and then once you're up here, you get ready to jump down here uh, and maybe get your nail gun out if you actually have ammo for it. Again, I don't. We're going to sink all the way to the bottom of this tube. It's a little finicky. Sometimes you get like stuck on the wall, but you just got to push through and uh, just get ready to fight these things because they are plenty. 
when you step in the water there, you'll start throwing up. So I usually try to avoid it. I totally forgot about that bubble. Wow. And just like that, I lost 125 health because I walked by a pus bubble. Insane, dude. I hate this game. <laughs> in the best way possible, though. I love this game, but just, you know, raging difficulty is exactly what they made it out to be. Uh, unfair, frankly. So if you still have 200 health at this point, uh, I'm happy for you. You are doing better than I am, and I'm the one making the tutorial for you. So uh, I would grab the fertile launcher, and we're going to press E on this key, and we are going to immediately run for it. Um, we've just burst out the stomach of the cow, and the cultists are not happy about it. Run over to this picnic, grab as much healing as you can, run back, and start firing the fertile launcher at the hordes of cultists that are currently firing at you. Uh, they should be grouped together, making the fertile launcher by far the most effective weapon. But again, you don't have to shoot at them directly. You can just shoot at the... Wow, I just shot the... Pi I just shot the pillar that I was jumping in front of. Phenomenal. You just have to shoot at the ground that they're standing on. And the explosion should be, um, you know, enough to take care of them. So now that we have the red key, we're going to head back to the house again. Don't pick that up. You don't need it. You'll actually have the opportunity to pick the milk gun up in a later level. So we will do so then. We're gonna head to the backyard and we're gonna go to the tree house. I guess there is healing in the house, which could have been helpful, but there should be, I think, some corn in the tree house, if I remember correctly. Let's pop in here. Okay, there's a cob of corn. Oh no, there's a few over here. There we go. Look at us, 82 health. Okay, we need to turn this computer on, which means we gotta plug it in, but the extension cable won't reach, or sorry, the, the cable won't reach, so we have to use an extension cable. So we'll place that there. Pick this up, place this over here. Put that there, there we go. Our password is password, minus the P. Six, nine, enter. Look out the window here and you'll see the hatch open. And that is our objective. So we're gonna step out the door here and we're going to very carefully walk this tight rope of a telephone wire. And we are going to run. Run, 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 level exit, we're done. Good. Don't have to fight anything. Just run to the exit and you're good. Okay, this is a fun level. So, again, if you had a nail gun, maybe you'll have uh, better accuracy with that button, but shotgun seems to work just fine. Uh, you're gonna... Okay, let's move this chair out of the way first. Whoops. Gonna uh, put the key in, grab the lid, get it out of here. Pick those up, put them in, grab the lid. Get out of here. When you first play the game, that's a funny joke, the idea of needing keys to do something as redundant as that. Um, but this is funny enough actually training you for the boss fight later. It's very clever game design. I really, really do enjoy this game. I think it's very well made in a lot of, lot of respects. Uh, even though it doesn't seem to take itself too seriously, I think it really does secretly. And uh, that's what I really like about it. It's a very good game at the end of the day. Okay, so we're gonna hop off the platform, and there are two cultists waiting around the corner. Shotgun's actually a pretty effective weapon for that, I think. Close range, just pop him right in the chest. There we go. There's a bubble up here, I don't know why. Very sneaky. You can get him from down here, though, before you even hop up here. And we're gonna walk across the catwalk here onto the blood pipes. And down here... We are now on top of the lift that we rode earlier, and hitting that button will send it back up here. Wow, I hope I can find some uh, nail gun ammo soon. Well, would you look at that. So there's a good little supply of ammo and health and everything here, so feel free to take advantage of that, stock up, and of course there's a blue key that we need to continue. Pop it in, and in we go. So it's time for a new weapon that we're going to use basically now and then never again for the entire game. <laughs> it's not super useful. It's only useful here and in the room that we're about to enter, and then frankly, you'll probably never use it ever again. So hit that button, that door opens. That's our objective. Um, for some reason, there are sometimes bubbles that spawn and come through the wall and kill you at this point in the game. I don't know why. Um, they didn't get me this time though, so it's all good. So entering this room um, and collecting this key is gonna trigger waves of enemies. So make sure you're prepared for that. Um, scout the room out, 
get familiar with your surroundings because we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. As far as I know, there's no cheese here. Uh, you just got to fight through hordes of enemies. If you think you can sit up on that platform and snipe them from up there, then good for you. In my opinion, though, the best way to deal with this is to lure them all to this water and electrocute them by pressing 9 on your keyboard or scrolling through like an idiot like I do and then just going like that and just zapping them while they're in the water. Okay, I'm gonna grab this. Oh yeah, also walking in the water gets you high. I, they're, they're manufacturing weed water over here. I, I, it's, it's groundbreaking technology. So in slow motion, this fight's a lot easier, so I actually recommend being high for this if you can. And you can see as the tanks enter the water, we're just gonna electrocute them and they're gonna blow up and they're not too much of an issue. Unfortunately, not every enemy is gonna make its way over to the water. There are cultists that spawn and just stand around and fire at you. In which case, just switch to something and shoot at them. Uh, there's plenty of weed on the ground if you need it, and you probably will because it's the most effective method of healing. Okay, we've successfully cleared out the room. It was very painful, but I did it. If I can do it, you can do it. I believe in you. So, our exit is up here. Come on now, there you go. Uh, up this... Okay, don't know why 20 dialogue um, clips just played at the same time. Also don't know where you came from, but hello. I don't know if the fertile launcher was the best uh, weapon to have out right there, but somehow I'm still alive. So before dropping down here, if you just be patient, the cultist will break the grate for you, and then you can just drop Toilet Sparkle down here. Whoops, maybe not there. That's maybe not the best spot for it. It's funny, I was just saying Toilet Sparkle is maybe not the best weapon in this game, but right here, it sort of acts as a grenade, and I find that it's pretty helpful to cheese this area before hopping down here. So, what is happening? Why is the dialogue triggering like that? Okay, green key. Here's your milk gun. Remember I said you'll be able to pick the milk gun back up at some point? Right here. Now is the time. This is a very difficult section. I am upset that I only have 43 health. So I'm going to turn back around. I'm going to head over here. And if you hit this button again, the door opens back up again. So you can hop in and you can collect whatever healing you'd like. There was no checkpoint, so I'm going to have to recollect that if I die. But let's just hope I don't die. So with the milk gun out, we're going to queue it up. And we're going to run in and we're going to start shooting. And you're just going to have to just spray and pray. That is what this gun is. Perfect. I think that was probably most of it. Evidently not all of it. I think my mate Jeff used to live around here. Okay, happy for your mate Jeff. And finally we've broken through. There is one bunny at the end of the hallway here. I don't know why. So just get ready for that as well. There he is. So climb this obnoxiously spirally staircase. And at the top of that, we get a checkpoint, which is good because this part sucks. There's two tanks here, and frankly, you're not equipped to deal with them if you don't have the milk gun. So I would recommend bringing that out and tearing through. There's a bathroom to your right here. As far as I know, there's really no reason to go in there, but there's a staff room here, and this place is kind of great because there's a coffee machine, which means infinite healing, as well as just general healing out and about, as well as a vending machine. Um... I am going to attempt to do this part first trial. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, I'm currently high, so everything's moving in slow motion, but I'll do my best to showcase what's happening. So the button here changes the flow of the uh, levers here. So you can see the, the crates are just going to infinitely spawn out of this corner, and we have to get them over to that fire there. So the first step is to just hit the button once, and they're all going to come out. Uh, and then what you have to do is just kind of toggle between it so we're gonna go like that whoops okay gonna go like that to push the crates down here it's very janky there you go now let's push it up here now let's push it down here now let's open the gate close it again so that it goes up here and it just fell off and there's frankly just nothing you can do about that you just got to keep doing this over and over because the physics are janky and that just happens sometimes there's really not a lot you can do about it just hope that one of these times it works. There you go. And now we go like that. And I think we've done it. Watch it slowly go there. Once it goes there, it slows down. And you can watch it inch towards the fire. And... Boom. So, 
get your maybe nail gun out. I think that's probably your best bet here. And get ready to clear out some flies. They're going to home towards you as soon as they see you. And at the top here, we're going to grab our red key. Don't shoot these eggs if you don't need to. Because they'll just spawn more flies. Uh, we're going to go over here. And it, the conveyor belt just kind of shoots you back up here. And now with this red key, we can open this door and fly down the conveyor belts into the unbreakable window. And uh, there's some milk machines there if you need them. So there's a zombie at the top of this elevator. Zombies are not easy to deal with. Um, we can either use the milk gun or uh, you can burn him and then just go back down the elevator and wait for him to disintegrate. So I'm going to try that. Okay, or I can just close the door like that. There we go. Yeah, trying to like shoot him with the nail gun, he'll probably kill you first. So you do kind of have to do one of those two things. Either burn him or spray him with the milk gun. Uh, we can't get through this door. We got to enter the password. And love it or hate it, the password, if you take up the damp lamp and turn it on, is... Sorry, what's the button again? X? I love clopping. That's fun. Okay, through the doors. I'll get your nail guns out here because we're going to have some bubbles coming up. Um, and a button to hit. I think my mate Jeff used to live around here. You can save the cow here. I don't really know if there's any benefit to doing so. I've never successfully done it. Because I just don't really care, if I'm being honest. Okay, so we need to make a cake to leave this area. So we need to grab a cake what? pan. Um, we're going to drop it here. And now I'm going to switch to my guitar and kill all the scientists. Because they will walk over your cake pan and kick it out of the way. And it's really annoying. This one, you see what I mean? Look at this, he's already walking towards it. Get out of here. Okay, that's probably good. There's another one back there, but he's nowhere near. So let's turn on the blender. Blend the cow. Be patient, wait for it to turn itself off. Some ammo for the milk gun, why not? Now click the drain button. And we now have a pie tray. Filled with delicious batter. We're gonna, whoops. Open the oven by pressing F to open that. Press F to put the cake in the oven. Press F to close the door. And I've just successfully done that, haven't I? Please just drop it. It's so janky, dude. Okay, there you go. Press E to start the oven. Good. You need to you need to leave, bro. There you go. What's that song? Baking a cake is easy. What is it? The Lazy Town song? It's been years since I heard that. Turn the turn the oven off. When it's finished. Scanning. There you go. Correct cake. There you go. Correct cake. And now the door opens. Uh, eat the cake. Here's your pro tip. That bumps you up to 200 health. I'm going to get a gun out because there are zombies at the bottom here. Um, you don't need to fight them, but it's just good to have some protection just in case. Okay, just run for it and jump over this pit and they will just the fall in the pit. Except that one, for some reason. I guess he just decided not to. Good for him. Very smart zombie. Uh, the exit blows up. That's okay. And up here is another zombie that spawns right there. Uh, I would alt-fire the shotgun to light your turds on fire. Just speeds up the process a little bit. Okay, get ready, because there's a bunch of dudes here. I think maybe the fertile launcher would be a good weapon of choice here and just fire it mercilessly into this room until all the cultists are taken care of. Excellent. Okay, so let's take this elevator here. I love how I'm all, I just already lost all 100 health that I got. Um, you can open the door here. I don't, you don't really need to, but because it's so easy, I'm just going to press Y and open the door. And look at that, the door's open. Um, what we really need to do is break through the grate. Crawl down here. There's another damp lamp. I guess this is a second use for the damp lamp. It just makes it a little easier to see in the vent here, but you don't really need it. Drop down here and get ready to fight some bubbles. Okay, after clearing this room out of enemies, sorry I forgot about this part, um, you have to unplug this red substance on the wall. I really don't know what this is, but for some reason it's powering that door to stay closed. So unplugging the cord means that the door opens. Uh, don't question it, but we need to do that to progress. So now what we need to do is stand here and in the uh, Through the broken window here if it's not broken already then break it. We're gonna fire 
I said we're going to fire at the button and quickly run here. The door closes behind you. The entire facility blows up. And then you just, like, wait for, like, a full minute. And the level just eventually ends itself. I, I don't know why. Hello? Okay, I don't know why. It just takes a really long time sometimes. I don't know if there's a trigger that I'm missing or what, but... Anyways, level's over. Let's begin the next level with a dream sequence. Fortunately, we've got infinite ammo. Um, so that helps a lot. Unfortunately, all your guns are randomized when you enter this area. So, my milk gun is no longer going to fire milk. Let's find out what I get. Oh, it's still firing milk. It randomized to fire itself. Bad example. Let's try the shotgun. Okay, the shotgun is now firing mines. Nail gun is now firing... Wowee! I don't know what the nail gun's firing, but it looks really powerful, so I'm probably gonna stick with that. Gun number eight. The glimmer gun. It's... I just can't access it anymore. I can't scroll up to it, and I can't press the number eight. Somehow the game just locked me out of that, so I, I can no longer even do a full cycle through my weapons because it just walls when it hits eight. Anyways, continuing our little walkthrough tutorial or whatever here. Um, behind here is a false wall, and back here is a tome, an utter sphere tome. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what that does. I've never actually used it, but if you're more adventurous than me, you can try to do it. The reason I bring up the false wall is because it's just handy to hide here after the cult is spawned. And I'm dead already, immediately. You you can trigger the next wave before you clear out every enemy, but I don't recommend doing that. Um, you can also fill this bathtub at any point, and once it's filled, you'll be able to hop in it and heal yourself back up to 100 health. It's very slow, but in between waves, it is a good means of healing. Uh, good news, it seems that my guitar now fires horse dildos. Um, in any other context, I wouldn't say that's good news. But when playing Egg Wife, I think this is going to help because we are in an enclosed space and I have uh, c good control over this weapon. It's not going to blow up in my face. And I can just kind of focus on avoiding uh, enemy projectiles and firing dildos off randomly and hoping that they will bounce into enemies. Okay, and just like that, we finished. So at the end of the last wave, the Egg Wife Apparition spawns by the bathtub. When you talk to her, a helium canister spawns above the bathtub. And then you can leave. You take the helium canister with you, um, and you head back to that uh, area where you spawned initially. Back here, we can now fill one of the two testicle balloons. And we can begin the second half of the level, which we have to survive in this unusual bathroom shower area for a while. Is that it? I think that was it. I think I cleared out everything. Which means because... Okay, I guess I'll just redo all of that again. Uh, as I was saying, I think I've just cleared out all the waves. So now, barring there's no fire that I walk into, leading up to the bathtub, I should be able to just talk to Egg Wife Apparition and spawn the final helium tank. And we can be out of here. Excellent. And now, with both of our testicle balloons filled, we can hop on top of the cannon which is a euphemism, I assume. And we're gonna just hop inside and switch to the pistol and quickly shoot that bubble. If you shoot it with anything other than the pistol, it's gonna take way too long and you'll probably just die. Um, but because the bubble's already so big, it barely takes any, any additional fluid in order to pop it. So uh, that's the strat there. So we're gonna duck underneath there and now we get to the fun part of the level, the boss fight. <laughs> you thought that was hard. Then I go. Okay, this is not my first time recording this part. Uh, this is a very difficult boss fight. I don't know what else. I can't sugarcoat it for you. You're probably going to die here uh, several times. 
but it's not as bad as whatever you're thinking. There is run remarkable cheese to get through this, and there's a very particular order to do things in uh, that will help uh, this boss fight a lot. Get your nail guns out. They're the only gun that you need here because you're just going to be popping milk bubbles. You don't really attack tar tar Taurus in yourself, uh, but there are plenty of milk bubbles that you'll want to pop through uh, just because they're in the way. So the first thing you're going to do, hop down here, hop over here, Hop in the bathtub and drop the bath bomb in. Um, we're going to try to get up to 200 HP immediately. And we're going to keep revisiting this bathtub over the course of the boss battle. Next, hop over to the valve. And just keep turning it in half circles. Just like this. This is the best method to turn this valve. It's intended to be janky. This is how you combat the jank. It's just little half circles like this. If you're fast, you can get it up to 100% before he even starts attacking. But what I'm going to do is let him attack to show you what happens if he does. Because there are two different attacks that he has. There's tenderize this. And I'm going to semi-skim you raw. If you hear that, hide behind this pillar and that will protect you from the milk. Um, if he says tenderize this, he's lifting his hammer up. In which case, hop over to this platform. Hop back on once the hammer's gone. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, over the course of this boss battle, keep your ears peeled and listen for tenderize this. Pasteurize this isn't even a problem. You just need to listen to tenderize this and watch where his hammer's dropping. If he drops that hammer on the platform you're standing on, you will die. You cannot survive the hammer drop, even with 200 HP. It is an insta-kill on raging difficulty. So keep your HP as high as you can. But yeah, if you see the hammer come up, leave immediately. That's the hardest part of this boss battle. The rest of this boss battle is not difficult. The only difficult part is just listening for that audio cue and making sure to keep moving. Um, again, the whole challenge right now is just plugging in cables. Don't worry about pasteurize this. That's nothing. That's just him talking. Tenderize this is the only one you really need to worry about. Okay, I'm low on health now, so I'm going to head back. Whoops, that's not good, considering I don't have a lot of health. He says you need to beef more careful if you ever need to fall. That's not a signal for an attack, but it can overwrite the signals for his attacks, because he can't talk on top of himself. So be careful with that. I'm just going to sit here. As long as you hide into this back corner, the milk can't hit you while you're in the bathtub, which is very handy to know. Okay, we're almost done. Let's keep clearing out these milk bubbles, because they're in the way. And let's plug this in over here. And let's plug this in. Perfect. All the cables were plugged in. We're almost done. Now we just have the keys left. So hop in this bathtub. He'll back up to 200. Perfect. Okay, so let's start with the red key. Start with the red key. Grab that. Um, remember to keep an eye out for tenderize this. See, there he went. Unfortunately, he was nowhere near me. I'm going to heal quickly might as well hide behind this beam okay perfect so we have the red key the green keys here and okay the milk really messed me up there and the red and green key go over here I'm currently getting abducted by a milk bubble pick up all three keys but you actually only need one of them right now and that's the light blue key um, before we go over there, since we're passing by the bathtub, might as well sit in it, heal up. Okay, tenderize this. Where's he going? Okay, he went back there. We're good. Let's pop this open. Grab the dark blue key. There's a ton of milk bubbles. I can't just ignore them. You gotta take them out. Hop back in the bathtub. If he says tenderize this while you're in the bathtub, you'll be fine. You will tank it. I think you, you're left with like 40 health or something, but you can do it. Um, so we have the dark blue and yellow key, which means we can get in there and get the white, gray, and orange keys. And I'm going to heal again. Perfect. Tenderize this. That's okay. It's the center platform, so we're good. Um, oh, shoot. I'm out of ammo. Okay, I'm out of nails. Unfortunate. So the next box is over here. The gray and orange key. For the purple key. And we're almost done. 
The purple and orange key are gonna open this. And the white key actually initiates the final hit. And just like that, we got our autosave. The level's finished. Um, before exiting the level, you might as well top up to 200 health because your health does carry over between levels, so you're only helping yourself by doing that. And uh, down this hole, the level ends. So not that bad. Okay, so grab a vehicle and let's get ready to leave. Uh, I forgot that we got a turn here. Excellent. <laughs> So this level is a very unique level that again has a lot of waves of enemies that we've got to take care of. And there is some cheese, but some of, some of it's not cheese. Some of it you really do just have to be good. Um, but fortunately, uh, it's not that bad. Again, if I can do it, you can do it. And I truly believe that. For some reason, when you turn off the, um, the dialogue in the game, uh, this dialogue specifically playing on the radio is not affected by it. I don't know why. Mumble and team, if you're watching, <laughs> I don't know if that was an oversight. Maybe for some reason the radio is bound to like the sound effects volume slider instead or something. I don't know. Oh yeah, there's a secret back here. I don't remember if there's anything valuable back here. There's just a couple lying on a picnic blanket. All right, there's a bong here. I've actually got three bongs, so I'm good, but I guess there's a dildo <laughs> if you you need uh, just a single extra bolt for your crossbow. There you go. Okay, so at the police blockade, we're gonna take a left into the field of cows. It, it It is in your best interest to leave these cows alive because each one of them provides a decent amount of health, honestly, when you drink the udders. Um, and health is something that you really can't get enough of. So might as well leave them alive if you can. Okay, so this is the end goal. You don't need to go here. I'm just showing where it is. This is where we need to go is the bridge control, but we don't have the blue key yet. Um, the blue key is in the church cemetery uh, and we need to dig it up, which means we need a shovel first or a, a spade or I can't remember what the game calls it, but it's not a, a word that I use. Anyways, it is inside here. So inside here, there are two cultists sitting here. Clear them out before they are an issue. And um, this is another part of the game that is just obscenely difficult. And you will probably die on several times. And there's just not a whole lot to do about it. Other than just keep trying over and over and be good. Um, there are some rabbits in here. You want to clear them out quickly and safely. Um, because, yeah, these little guys will tear through your health. And they're very fast for some reason. Can hear that's not all of them. Come here. Okay, was that it? Are we good? Actually, the cross bolt might have been a better fit for this, but whatever. Right here. Okay, this is not my first time doing this either. Uh, I've died a couple times here. Fortunately, there, there should be an autosave that triggers before you pick up the spade. If there isn't an autosave, I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes the game gives it to you, sometimes it doesn't. But I was lucky enough to get this autosave. Pick the spade up bubble another bubble cows plenty of them just tear through them don't worry about keeping them alive just run because we have an unfortunate encounter here with the very intimidating and annoying biblically accurate ball of pus or whatever it is it just it goes right into the tool shop to ruin your day um i like to go all the way over into this corner because this is me luring the bubble as far away as possible from the church, which is where we need to go. Okay, perfect. All right, let's run. So this gives you the best shot as possible of actually getting to the church and doing what you need to do before this thing kills you. Hop in a vehicle if you can. Um, it's faster than running. Hop into the church graveyard. We're gonna dig up this grave and immediately get ready to fire at the zombie that's standing inside. I like the triple nail gun, does the most amount of damage. Um, did I get the key? Yes, I did. Once you have the blue key, which you can see in the bottom left there, we're going to head for the bridge control room, pop it in, and that is going to spawn a bunch of enemies that we need to take care of. On top of the fact that this stupid flying bubble is chasing us. It's so annoying. Okay, there's a checkpoint when you pop the key in, which is nice. Uh, I recommend targeting this guy immediately with the triple nail guns. Um, or I guess you could probably use the fertile launcher. That'd probably be fine too. Get him out of here because he is going to be very annoying to work around. You don't really need to kill anyone. You're just waiting for the bridge to drop. 
So once the bridge is dropped, you can just leave. Um, if you have a vehicle, I'm happy for you. I do not. I'm just running. I don't know how many flies or bubbles or tampons are chasing me. I don't care. I'm just gonna run. It's okay. We got a checkpoint. If we die, it's fine. It's chill. Don't even worry about it. Okay, so this sucks. I'm in a bad scenario. I've died a couple times here. This checkpoint is good. I've got lots of health, but I'm being chased by the dirty bubble. It sucks. Um, blow up the gas station. Hop in the truck. And let's try to get out of here before we are electrocuted to death. The reason I say blow up the gas station is because if you don't, uh, he will. <laughs> if we can just successfully drive through this rubble over to this fallen apartment building, we will be deuces. Or aces? I don't know, I don't play poker. Climb up these. Climb up this. Go over here. Go in here. And jump over to this elevator shaft. Or don't, just fall and have to redo the whole thing again, that's cool. And inside the elevator shaft is the level exit button. Pop that, and we're golden. And that, ladies and gentlemen, takes us to the final level in Egg Wife. Outside of the apartment elevator, you're gonna head out and into this hole here. Head up here. That's the end goal is going in that door, which we don't have a key for. But we'll be able to get a key down here. Uh, there are zombies. I recommend the flaming shotgun. Again, that's the alt fire on the shotgun. I just shot flaming turrets in front of my face. The reason I recommend the alt fire is because the fire damage takes care of the zombies faster than you will. Um, I didn't actually mean to drop. Try to stay on that beam as long as you can. It's safer. But uh, if you drop, whatever. Just be good, I guess. Okay, was that it? I think so. Just careful of the little fly eggs everywhere. Uh, there's a nice little selection of ammo and goodies over here. That's fun. Take advantage of that if you can. I missed a zombie somehow, but it's all good. Grab that green key and we gotta head back. And if we climb up here again, this takes us to the door. Pop the key in. And there is a fire extinguisher there. Shoot it. It blows a hole in the wall. Now, you can jump in that hole and continue. Uh, if you want, you can also just crouch jump through the door. You don't actually need to shoot the fire extinguisher, but I did. Okay, down here a tank spawns. I'm gonna get the fertil launcher out for that. That'll probably be our best bet. Is that it? We good? Yeah, we're good. I think there's a bong back here? Yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't even been using my bongs. I still got all three of them. Okay, there is a vehicle here you can use. Um, I don't think it gets you very far though, does it? I'm pretty sure there's like a wall up ahead, so... Maybe not super necessary. Um, but... Yeah, no, I wouldn't recommend taking this. Reason is, you gotta get out anyways, because if you go up here, you can find the Undertaker. Um, now, you were able to get this in the church in the last level, but if you grabbed the Undertaker, it would have just spawned a bunch of cultists that you would have had to fight through. Like, for no reason. Don't do that to yourself. You don't need to do that. It's a horrible thing on even just normal difficulty. Having to do that on, on raging, I can't even imagine. Don't, don't even risk it. If you're more careful than me, you can just jump up there. Okay, good. I thought that egg might like burst open or something. It doesn't. Careful of the rabbits. That is not the only one you will have to shoot. So just keep your nail gun out and get ready to take care of that. Or a shotgun, that'll work. It really reminds me of uh, going through the flood in Halo 3. I don't know if that was like the intention, but like it's really similar. It's fittingly like climactic. These little guys remind me of, like, flood spawns. Down here, we have uh, an onslaught of enemies that are going to spawn and try to take take us down. But we do not need to actually fight a single one of them. There should be a checkpoint. There it is. So because of that checkpoint, we can safely just run for the door here, hop inside, and turn this corner here. And I would swap to the sniper rifle if I were you. 
And I would get ready to take down the cultists that are inside this building. They are going to be annoying. You do need to take care of them. But other than that, I mean, you're good. Just go over here, press E on this intercom, and wait for the cutscene to finish. I guess we can do this preemptively. Okay, so we have Lady Car, Waifu Car. We can't go through this door until Jonathan stops talking, which conveniently he just did, and there's a checkpoint, so we're good to go. So we have to carefully navigate our car. Now, if you didn't kill all the enemies in that last area, then flies are going to be chasing you. Um, but it shouldn't matter. I mean, you're in a vehicle. They can't really do anything to you. Through the doors, through the windows, and slowly we're going to enter the elevator. There's a checkpoint here, which is very useful. Um, flies might still be chasing you, so if they are, I guess be ready for that. So up the stairs here... Nail ammo, that's good, we love that. Hop in the hole here. And hit the elevator control switch. There's some more ammo and stuff. Right, yeah, there's a giant fly that for some reason is attacking me right now. Uh, that happens like every time. That's super consistent. I don't know why, but yeah, that happens like all the time. Uh oh, that's annoying. Don't do that. Don't fall down. There are some areas where you really cannot afford to fall down, so be careful. Yeah, there's a giant fly over there. You see him? He's way over there, and he's, he's somehow able, able to shoot once you enter that area. Okay, careful of the acid rabbits here. I'm kind of lucky because they all bunched up. They don't normally do that. They normally, like, trickle down at you one at a time. Okay, oh my gosh, dude, this giant fly. Look what's happening! Okay, this is not supposed to be, like, this aggressive. It's not like, even supposed to trigger yet. I swear that is, like, a glitch. But anyways... If you can successfully get through that with 12 health, uh, hop in the vehicle. There's a checkpoint after you leave the elevator with the vehicle. And then you just have to hop across the road here and get over here. Over here, we're just going to park the vehicle at the garage. Perfect. Let's park her. Let's park her in here. Okie dokie, into the auto barn. Uh, just be patient. Now we have to experience a cutscene. Uh, I'm actually just going to skip this part for various reasons. And once that's done, uh, we have a new car. Uh, ask your mommy and daddy how that one happened. We're going to cycle the doors. We're going to hop in the passenger seat. Never mind, that's the driver's seat because this is a British game. And we're going to drive over here. And when we hit this button, it's going to spawn a wave of enemies again, and we are not prepared to fight them, but fortunately, we can cheese this one, thank God. Hit this button and run. Back to the auto barn. You'll probably have to take care of something. Yeah, there's a tank there, but that's okay. We can just ignore him. Hit this button. Hit this button. Beautiful. So this takes us to where Jonathan was. If you remember Jonathan, here he is. Uh, we're just going to kill Jonathan quick, grab that key. So check the cameras here, and if we go over here, we can see all the enemies that we would have been fighting. There is a testicle, there are a bunch of cultists, there were some tanks. Oh, there's two testicles, awesome. There's a giant fly. Um, just sit here on the camera and watch them. They're all going to bunch up in this corner and desperately try to fight you and uh, fail because they can't because they're shooting at a wall. Meanwhile, the tank is going to fire explosive blasts at everybody, um, killing everyone for you. So you don't have to do anything. We're just going to sit here and be patient. And uh, they should just all burn to death at some point. Perfect. I think that's that's basically the most of it. That giant fly will never go away. He he's he, there's you'll always have to deal with him at some point. But I think that's it. I think everyone else is dead, which is awesome. Um, the red key. Brings, gives you access to the breeding chamber. So if you want a different vehicle, you can get one. You can take the waifu car back, which has been um, compromised, we'll say. I don't need to elaborate on how. 
Um, but personally, I don't actually recommend it. It's just for fun um, because this car is faster and funner in my opinion. So let's just take it and get out of here. Why am I dying? Am I on fire? What, what, the, what the heck was that? I just lost half my health. I don't even know what happened. Doesn't matter. Let's get out of here. We just have to play out this very long driving sequence. Again, to me, very reminiscent of uh, Halo 3. I guess Halo 1 had a, um, a Warthog escape sequence too, didn't it? Okay, that was very unfortunate. Tell you what, it's okay. This is what checkpoints are for. <laughs> Hopefully you're a better driver than me. I I don't know how I just managed to do that. Um but that's actually helpful to me because the end of the level is right here. So if <laughs> if you fall off of the road like I just did, I guess it kind of works out. Um so this is the end of the level. Drive in the tunnel. This triggers an explosion to happen behind you. Uh hop into the bus here. Hop out the other side, and as you head over here, you should trigger a second explosion to block the other side of the tunnel. And that ends Egg Wife Part 1. At this point, we just wait out the cutscene, and uh, if the patch notes were not lying, there should be an achievement that triggers uh, after this. And there they are. Beautiful. Love that. Okay. Well, there you go. Egg Wife. It's about a two to three hour campaign if you do it this way. Um, cheese and everything. Uh, hopefully you have uh, as easy a time as possible beating the game on the most unfair difficulty. Uh, hopefully this helped you. And if it did, I'm happy for you. I, there's no point in asking you to subscribe because I'm probably never going to make another video like this ever again. I just happened to play this game a lot and I thought I was a bit of an authority on it at some point. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye. That's crunchy.